Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Warbands. Today we are playing Kill Team and we'll see Necrons vs Tyranids. I'm Simone and I'll play the Necrons. Hi, I'm Andrea and I'll be playing Tyranids. Before we started, if you are subscribed to the channel, welcome back. If you are not subscribed yet and want to help us, join our growing community now by clicking on the subscribe button. And don't forget to activate the bell so you don't miss the next battle reports. Thank you guys! Today's mission is escalating hostilities. The two armies will have to deploy within these two areas. There are six objectives and they are arranged in this way. The goal of this game is to control the objectives. At the end of the second and third initiative phases, each player removes an objective near their drop zone. At the end of the first and second turn, the primary objectives controlled will award one victory point each. At the end of the third and fourth turn, they will award two victory points instead. There will also be three secondary objectives each that will award points. Each player can score a maximum of 12 points from the primary objectives and a maximum of 2 points from each secondary objective. For a total of 6, the player with the most victory points is the winner. The game will last 4 turns. Both armies start with 2 common points, earning 1 point at the start of each turn. Let's move on to the description of the kill teams. The ground shakes violently as a rift opens near an old abandoned Imperial outpost controlled by the Tyranids. The kill team of the Necrons rises in the wasteland, ready to eliminate the Tyranid rabble. Once awakened, the Necrons stop at nothing. My Necrons kill team is composed of two fire teams, Immortals and Necron Warriors. The fire team of the Immortals, named Items by our community, is made up of four operatives, one of whom is the kill team leader. He is armed with the Gauss Blaster and as additional equipment he has the Tesla Weave and the Starfire Core. The other three operatives are armed with the Gauss Blaster and have the Starfire Core in addition. The Necron Warriors fire team is made up of five operatives, all armed with Gauss Flayer. The Lunicans are back, but this time they have to defend their offspring from the Necrons. A rift in the ground has brought those infernal machines straight into the Tyranid's lair. Stop them before they do too much damage and send them back to the graves they belong to. My kill team consists of one Tyranid Warrior fire team and a Tyranid Swarm fire team. The Tyranid Warrior fire team is composed by a Tyranid Warrior heavy gunner operative armed with Dino Cannon and Bone Swords. One Tyranid Warrior fighter and a Tyranid Warrior leader, both equipped with Bone Sword and Lash Whip and Bone Swords, just to give them the additional attack. As additional equipment, the leader and the fighter have feeder tendrils, toxin sacks, and only the leader has adrenal glands. Then we have the Looney Gowns fire team, formed by 8 feet Sorma Gowns, armed with sighting talents and ready to crush some Necrons. My kill team has much greater firepower than the Tyranids. The problem is that the battlefield doesn't offer many points from which to target the enemies. I'll have to find a way to track down Andrea's operatives before they jump on my poor Necrons. In the meantime, I've deployed my kill team evenly and all with engage order. My kill team excels at close combat, so I'll have to try not to take too many casualties in the first round. Being the defender, I have the possibility to choose which side of the battlefield to deploy. Obviously, I chose the one that has more cover in order to offer Simone as few targets as possible. Then I gave almost all of my models the conceal order, and to my gunner the engage order. It's time to do the scouting phase. Each of us chooses a number of dice equal to the corresponding number of the choice. 1 for 45, 2 for infiltrate and 3 for recon. Red dice for tyrannids and grey dice for necrons. We both chose recon. The defender moves first, so I let little John, my fighter, move 3 inches forward. On the left flank, Piper uses the dash at her disposal to get closer to the objective. In the strategy phase, I use a common point for deploy stock. I can perform a free normal movement with an operative if that model has the concealed order and is more than 3 inches from enemy models. Chop chop Tom, move behind that barricade. In the target reveal section I show my tack up challenge and choose the Immortal Fender as friend operative and the Tyrant Warrior Fighter as the enemy operative. I reveal the tack up protect the assets. If I eliminate two enemy operatives near an objective, I gain one victory point. Ratchet is the first to activate and moves forward in control of the objective. My gunner, Spike, moves forward so that he can see past the building and the pipe in front of him. Wally, with movement and dash, moves over the pipeline and positions itself right next to the objective. Tweety moves forward and hides behind the wall. Being able to activate two Hormagons at the same time, Bugs Count also hides behind the building waiting to charge some Necrons. Gasket moves forward with movement and dash, then he leans against the pipeline to cover the central objective. Honey Count and Roadrunner follow their teammates and position themselves behind the ruins as well. All Tyranids' targets remain covered, so Fender skirts the crater and approaches the central objective using movement and dash. 
the next are Taz and Jerry, who move and dash behind the column, making themselves small to hide from the Necron's fire. Cappy hides behind the rocks and prepares to fire on the next turn. Thanks to the initial movement, Little John easily gets to control the objective too, while still being hidden from the Necron's sight. Big Weld, filled with frustration for the lack of targets to shoot at, joins his companion near the pipeline. Tom, thanks to movement and dash, manages to climb over the wall and crouches in the corner hoping not to be seen by the enemies but controlling objective 1, arriving at 4 control objectives. Then Duffy Gun takes Tom's place behind the barricade. Rodney, the leader, reaches out to his underlings to better control the situation. No enemy in sight, sir. The last to move is Kenny, who goes behind Little John, ready to charge some Necrons in the next turn. Bender, with movement and dash, moves sideways and gets closer to the objective. Where are the Tyranids? Piper ensures full control of the objective, standing in cover of the barricade and loading the weapon while waiting for the next turn. First round, complete disaster, I wasn't able to fire a single shot because Andrea literally kept all the Tyranids hidden and did not expose any operatives to sight. In addition, Andrea took control of the central objectives without problems and secured a lot of victory points, while I, the poor slow Necron, took only two objectives and earned two victory points. This is what happens when an army with three circle movement makes fun of an army with two circle movement. The life of the Necrons is hard. In the next round I have to start killing some bugs or I'll be in real trouble. I think this was the fastest kill team round ever played in this channel. I managed to hide all my models and take control of 4 objectives. This brings me to 4 victory points, 2 over Simone. My Tyranids are in a very good position. I have total control of the battlefield and not having suffered any losses in this round, I'm way ahead of the Necrons. In the next round, I will try to prevent Simone from challenging the central objectives to continue my victory points lead on the Necrons, to secure the game. I just hope I had the initiative. Second round, rolling for initiative. Oh no, a 3. Oh no, a 6. Initiative is mine. At the end of the initiative phase, each player, starting with who has the initiative, removes an objective near his drop zone. I remove objective 3. I don't think my Hormagons are going to stay there for long. I remove objective 6, that's the hardest one for me to defend. In the strategy phase, I use the strategic ploy Relentless Onslaught for one common point, which allows my operatives to reroll an attack dice during shooting or combat if the target is within 6 inches. I reveal the tag op hold the line. At the end of the battle round, if there are no enemy operatives within 6 inches of my drop zone, I gain one victory point. I also reveal Andrea's same tag op hold the line. Kenny changes his order to engage, and as a good leader, he charges both Necrons in front of him to protect his friend and prevent Simone from completing the Taco Op challenge, and taking him away the chance to earn 2 victory points. Thanks to the ability of the Lash Whip, enemies inside engagement range have their attacks reduced by 1, then, as a second action, Kenny targets the Immortal. 5 attacks at 2, all hit. Fender responds with 3 attacks at 2 thanks to the support of his companion. I use a common point to reroll the failed attack, much better. I do damage with the first dice. Fender also does damage with the first attack. With the second dice, Kenny blocks an attack. I have no chance to save him, so with the last one, Fender does damage. And with the remaining attacks, Kenny takes out the threat and recovers the 3 wounds. Only one. He's left with 14 wounds. I can't afford to lose Fender, as he's the operative of choice for my secondary objective, so I use the tactical ploy reanimation protocols for one common point. I place a token where the model was, and at the start of the next turn, he can revive at 3+. Plus. See you soon, Fender! Stay around, please! Gasket finally manages to find a Tyranid, so he moves over the pipeline closer to the target and then prepares to fire. Sorry, Bug, you ended up on the wrong windshield. 4 hits a 3 on the Ormagant. Rerolling the 2 thanks to the strategic ploy. <laughs> Obviously, 2 again. 1 critical hit and 2 normal hits. Ouch! I need 3 sixes to save him. I guess Tom is just dead. Don't worry, buddy, you will be avenged. Next to move is Little John, who changes his order to engage and then charges the two immortals alongside the crater. My leader is equipped with the Tesla Weave. When a model charges him, I roll 3d6 and for every 5 plus, he inflicts a mortal wound. One mortal wound. 17 wounds left. Not a problem. Little John makes 5 attacks at 3 on the leader. Bone swords can crit with 5 plus. This means 4 crits through and a normal hit. You literally melted him! Rodney responds with 3 attacks on 2. 1 critical hit and 1 normal hit. With the first dice, I defend Simon as critical. With the only dice left, I can only do damage. And with the rest of the attacks, he melts the Necron, recovering the 3 wounds. 
2 wounds gained, down to 16 wounds. My leader suffers from premature death. Big Weld disengages and steps away from the monster to allow his allies to shoot him. Daz wants to avenge his friend, so he charges the Necron that controls objective 1. As soon as he's in combat, he does 4 attacks at 4. His weapons allow him to reroll all the dice. 2 crits and a normal hit. Gasket responds with 3 attacks on 3, hitting them all and making a critical. The first dice defends the crit. The Necron defends one of the Ormagan's attacks. Does this damage with the remaining critical. Gasket plunges the bayonet into the insect and does damage with the last attack. Here, you have 4 wounds remaining. 4 wounds left for you too. And you're injured. Jerry also wants to avenge his childhood friend and charges the damaged Necron. Another 4 attacks on 4, the critical is enough to take out the enemy, but still roll in the dice, just to be sure. Gasket responds with 3 attacks on 4 due to the injury. And it's 2. Before he notices it, Jerry runs his clothes between the cables of the Necron and tears him in half. A terrible hand for Gasket. Terrible. Terrible hand. Bender witnessed the fight scene, and after Gasket falls to the ground, the Immortal takes aim and fights on the Ormagan to kill him. Four shots at three. All hit. Due to penetration, Jerry can only defend with two dice, and he needs two sixes. He's dead. You can join Tom now. Thanks to the kill, I can reveal the attack of Deadly Marksman by activating it. The next kill Bender makes will earn me one victory point. Spike has no vision on the Necrons, and therefore decides to find a more suitable position by advancing with movement and dash and changing the order in conceal. Piper falls back from combat and I take advantage of her movement to take control of Objective 2. Poor thing, he doesn't know what trouble he's gotten into. As soon as the Necron approaches Objective 2, Bugs Gun leaps over the window and charges him. Once in combat, the Harmagant makes 4 attacks at 4. Rerolling the 2. All hit. Piper, caught off guard, swings her rifle, making 3 attacks at 3. And hitting every time, with a critical hit too. Oh, that's unfortunate. I cannot defend that crit, so Bugs is just dead. At least, he tries to deal some wounds. Bugs count does damage with the first dice. The Necron deals damage with the crit. With the second dice, the Tyranid deals damage. Bored by the situation, Piper smashes the Ormagan's skull with the second attack. Too bad. You almost did it, Bugs. Next one. Three wounds left for Piper. Roadrunner sees his friend fall and runs to his rescue, but he arrives too late. He then decides to avenge him by doing four attacks at four plus on the bad Necron. Come on, I just need you to hit a single attack and he's dead. There he is. Oh, he's pretty angry, I'd say. No need to roll, she's dead. Piper greets us happily knowing that she has brought a Hormagant with her. Thanks to Roadrunner, I earn one victory point for the attack of Protect the Assets. Ratchet targets the Tyranid Warrior Fighter with 4 shots at 3. One critical hit and two normal hits. Three dice at 4 plus to defend. Just one. Rerolling one with a common point. That's better. Just a critical hit through. 12 wounds remaining. A second action, Ratchet leaps over the barricade and charges the Ormagant alongside the objective to contest it. Honeygaunt uses movement and dash to get to the barricade behind the Necron while waiting for the Immortal to return from the grave. The next to activate is Tweety, who just to be safe, decides to move with caution to get control of the objective contested by the Necron without entering combat. Wally tries to reach the objective by taking advantage of the presence of the Ormagant nearby and charges him. Arriving in combat, Wally swings the weapon, making 3 attacks at 3. All hit, including a critical. Furious, Taz responds with 4 attacks at 4. Rerolling the failed dice. It would have been a great roll if Simone didn't start the fight. Yeah, but it's not enough. You are dead. And Taz also greets us, leaving the objective in the hands of the Necron. Well done, Wally. Duffy Gunt approaches the wall, but still remains in control of Objective 4. Cappy uses her movement to get past the rocks and take control of objective 5. Then, having the Tyranid warrior close to her, she decides to shoot him to weaken him so that in the next turn, Fender after being reborn can kill him and earn me one victory point for the attack of challenge. 4 shots at 3. Wow, Cappy's on fire! All hit with one critical. Need 3 fours at least to save him. 1, 2, 3. Something's missing. He's dead. No! You just had to weaken him, not kill him! 
Damn! You just made me lose two victory points! Oh well. Say thank you and leave. Quickly! At the end of the second round, I earn another 4 victory points thanks to the 2 controlled objectives plus the 2 tag oops, reaching 8 points total. I have lost a lot of harm against this round, but I also took out a lot of necrons. So let's say that all in all, it went well. In the next turn, I need to control an objective to score at least 2 more victory points to maintain the points cap with Simone. And thanks to the advantage I have accumulated, I should be able to win without much effort. Let's see what happens in the next round. I still can't believe that a simple warrior was able to inflict 12 wounds on a tyrannid warrior. It was really a low blow. If nothing else, the game has finally come to life and I can start doing damage to the tyrannids. Thanks to the two objectives that I control, I earn two victory points, reaching four. In the next round, I have to be able to control the central objectives that will be worth two victory points each. But above all, I have to be able to bring Fender back to life. At the start of the third round, Fender tries to resurrect. I need a 3 plus to get him back on the battlefield, and I really need it. Just right! He's back! The 3 wounds remaining. 2. Nice! With the living metal ability, he recovers 2 more. Then comes back into play with 4 wounds. Not bad. Rolling for initiative. Oh yes! A 6! Oh no! A 3! Wait a minute. Why did I say this scene? At the end of the initiative phase, we remove the remaining objectives near our drop zone, leaving only the objectives in the center of the battlefield. Fortunately, I was able to get the initiative. Now, I have few more chances than before. The fight will focus on the central objectives, who will control them with decide the outcome of the match. During the strategic phase, I use two strategic ploys, Relentless Onslaught and Implacable March for a total of two common points. Thanks to them I can reroll a dice during shooting or combat if the model is within 6 inches of the target and, if I want, I can add a circle to the movement of my necrons. Big Weld activates first and immediately fires on the Tyranid Warrior leader making 4 shots at 3. Being within 6 inches, he can reroll one dice and I really need an extra critical, so I reroll the 3. Oh, maybe it was better before. One critical and two normal hits. Thank you! Minus 1 penetration, so saving 2 with 4 plus. All good. Just 5 wounds to Kenny. As a second action, Big Well decides to charge the Ormagant by staying in the leader's engagement zone and blocking them both in combat. I use 1 common point for the tactical ploy Will of the Hive Mind on Kenny to give him 1 additional APL. Now, Kenny is angry and unleashes 5 attacks at 2 on the Necron that has approached him. All hit, including 2 criticals. Big Well responds with 3 attacks at 3 due to the Lash Whip. One critical hit and one normal hit. In order to avoid problems, I defend Simone's crit with the first dice and do damage with the others. Big Weld has no chance to survive, so he lunges at the Tyranid and stabs him with the bayonet doing damage. The three wounds recovered by Kenny? Just one. He's down to seven wounds. The Necron is crumpled into himself. Yay! As a second action, Kenny whips the Necron who revived this turn with his Lash Whip. Four hits at two. Oops, sorry. Three wounded. The newly reborn Fender finds itself under enemy fire and ducks by rolling 3 dice at 3. Oh nice, Fender is fine. Last action. Since the whip was unsuccessful, Kenny charges the Necron in front of him. Ratchet is in close combat, so he decides to attack the Tyranid in front of him by making 3 attacks at 3. All hit, including 1 critical. Roadrunner responds with 4 attacks at 4. Rerolling the failed dice. At least, 1 crit is there. Good. The Necron goes first and throws a mighty punch in the bug's face, dealing damage with the crit. The Tyranid responds by sticking a claw into the Necron's already pierced head, dealing critical damage. With the second attack, Ratchet finishes off the Ormagant and stands victorious over his body. Another good Tyranid leaving. I guess you hit a wall, Roadrunner. Ratchet is damaged, but still standing. Not being in combat anymore, with the second action, Ratchet shoots the Tyranid next to him. The objective will be mine. 4 shots at 4 due to the injury. Rerolling the 1. 3 hit, including a critical hit. Please, you need to save at least 1. 6 to save. Yes, he's alive. Though with only 1 wound remaining, Tweety charges the bad guy and attempts to take him out. Fortunately, if the Tyranids are within 6 inches of friendly models with synapses, they can ignore the penalties of the injury. So, Tweety makes 4 attacks at 4. Come on, I need a 6. Rerolling all. Nope. Just two normal hits. Oh my god, the Ormagant didn't make any crit! Ratchet attacks with three dice at four. Hitting two! Tweety, with her final strand, does three damage to the Necron. 
with the only attack left, Ratchet devastates the second Tyranid in a row while keeping control of the objective. Ratchet, you are my hero! And Tweety abandons us too. These Tyranids die like flies. Honeygown should have charged the Immortal, but now she is forced to capture the objective, so she charges the Necron Warrior too. Considering that he only has one wound left, Honeygown only needs one successful hit. Being able to reroll all the dice, it shouldn't be difficult. 4 attacks at 4. Yep, he's finally dead. Ratchet can do anything, unfortunately, having only one wound. You did more than expected. You were great, thank you. Wally has figured out that objectives are more important than kills, so he moves through the windows with movement and dash to contest objective 2. Nice! Spike finally has vision on some Necrons and can shoot. He then points his Venom Cannon in the direction of the Necron Warrior in front of him and fires 5 shots at 4. 2 crits and 1 normal shot. Good! With penetration minus 1, Cappy defends herself with 2 dice at 3. Or should I say, she doesn't defend herself. With Cappy goes my only chance to control objective 1. Thunder falls back from the fight for fear of being reduced to a pile of junk too and climbs over the barricade away from the monster. Hush hush, Tuffigon climbs over the window and hides in the corner, keeping an eye on Objective 1. Bender can target the Ormagant on Objective 1 because he is hidden, so the Necron moves sideways, entering the crater. Then he opens fire on the Ormagant next to Objective 2, hoping to take him out, for it's a 3. 3 hit, 2 of which are critical, perfect! Poor Honeygaunt only has 2 defense dice due to penetration, and on top of that, she saves with 6. I doubt she'll be able to save herself. Exactly. You can join the other Looney Guns, my dear. All in all, this turn went well, much better than the others. In this round, I earned 3 victory points, reaching 7. The difference in victory points is no longer insurmountable, and I still have a chance to win. It's very important that in the next round I can have the initiative and kill the Tyrant leader. My Necrons are doing well, especially Ratchet, who managed to take out 2 Armaguns in combat. But I need them to do even more. Come on, guys, you can do it! At the end of this round, I earned 2 victory points thanks to the objective 1 and then additional victory point for the attack op, reaching 11 victory points. The next round will be determined by who wins the initiative. My leader is in a dangerous position. On one hand, he can eliminate 2 immortals without too many problems, and on the other hand, he can be eliminated without problems by the immortals. Let's see what happens. At the start of the round, Fender recovers 2 wounds thanks to the Living Metal ability, reaching 6 wounds, rolling for initiative. 6! I have the initiative! Damn! I did 6 too! With a tie, the player who lost the initiative the previous round wins it. During this strategic phase, I used the strategic ploy Relentless Onslaught for one common point. First, I used the tactical ploy Will of the Hive Mind on Kenny to improve his APL by 1. Then, Kenny tries again to whip the Wounded Necron in front of him with his Lash Whip. 4 shots at 2, dealing 2 critical and 2 normal hits. Awesome! Fender tries to defend with 3 dice at 3. And only one is successful. I don't think that's enough. I think this time you are definitely dead. I'm sorry. With the whip still full of oil, Kenny turns and charges the last remaining immortal. But since he is no longer within 6 inches of a friendly model with synapses, Kenny makes 5 attacks at 3 due to the injury. Delivering 3 crits and 1 normal hit. Uh, apparently Andrea left the best for last. Bender responds with 3 attacks on 3. And with only one critical and no other successful attacks, there is nothing Bender can do. Kenny gets sated and recovers the 3 wounds. 1. Again. It's fine. Bender greets us after doing his best. And Kenny goes back to 8 wounds. Wally is left alone and there is little he can do to make me win the game. Unfortunately, the initiative won by Andrea decided the result of the match, but Wally will not live without first trying to avenge his friends. After moving, he takes aim at the Tyranid leader and fires on him making 4 shots at 3. 1 critical hit and 2 normal hits. Rerolling 1 thanks to deploy. Never mind. 3 defense dies at 4 for my leader. Saving only the crit. Kenny is left with only 2 wounds, but he is alive and well. That's weird. I'd like to tell you about how Wally managed to survive by escaping the battlefield, but I'm not sure if that's the truth. I'll let you decide his fate. Just like I said in the last round, the initiative was everything. My Tyranids performed surprisingly well in this match, and managed to defend their offspring successfully. The movement difference really helped me a lot against the Necrons, but the thing that made the difference, in my opinion, was the battlefield we created. With all those elements where I could hide my models, I was able to take a turn with zero shots fired. Despite everything, 
the game was extremely close. I keep repeating that, in my opinion, this new version of Kill Team is definitely more interesting than the Warhammer 40k. After seeing the heroic actions accomplished by Ratchet, I began to hope that I could actually win the game. If only Andrea hadn't rolled at 6 for the initiative, the game could have been won by the Necrons. Surely, the first round passed without being able to shoot was very heavy, as well as the Necron Warrior managed to inflict 12 wounds in one shot on the Tyranid Warrior. When the dice decide to troll you, they do it with less. The difference in movement between the two kill teams was another element against me. All things considered, I think I did my best. Maybe I could have chosen better secondary objectives. And with this, we conclude. I announced that the kill team campaign is about to start and you will soon have news about it. We are very excited to be able to play the first campaign with you. That said, if you like our content and want to help us grow the channel, we have an account on the platform Buy Me A Coffee where you can support us with donations. Any help you can give us to improve the channel is welcome. We are counting on you. The link is in the description. And if you have come this far, write the word Wally in the comments to let us know. You are the best. And if you are not yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. If you liked the video, leave a like and write us in the comments. We are always curious to know what you think. That's it guys. See you next video.